Good afternoon, guys. James here in a very sunny Swanwick Arena down on the south coast. We've got this afternoon for you a really exciting new one, Princess V48. This one's called Destiny, just behind us here in the water. And she's an absolute cracker. So we're going to run this one out today with just Kim and myself. These are pretty much the ultimate two-person boat. Very, very easy to handle. They're on IPS 600, so the D6435 pod drive diesel engines, very easy joystick, bow thrust and what have you. So very easy to handle. You can see here we're on a 15 metre finger pontoon at Swanwick. So nice and easy to get on and off. There is space on the back with these boats with the closed off patio doors. Also to put a Williams jet tender if you wish. You can see the slots in the back there where you could put some optional chocks. The whole mechanism on the back here dropping into the water to make that launch and recovery very easy. We've got a full enclosure canopy that we've just taken off on the back here. Obviously a nice sunny day here in the marina. It's going to be a chance to see what the boat's like off the dock. Some running shots as we always do. And I'm just going to try and give you an idea from the crewing perspective as well, how we would do this with just the turbus on board. So literally taking the canopies off, I haven't powered the boat up anything yet. We'll have a proper look round when we're on board and heading down the river. But just for now, I will show you basic start up and what have you so we come down here to the panel just on the stairs we've got some little switches here and then there's a high load one here as well so that's brought most of the major systems to life on the boat and then we're just going to turn on some lighting you can see certain things isolated where the owners had the boat in sort of powered down mode. So um, we'll have a proper look around the cabins. This is a really rare one. So we've got the third cabin option down here and we'll have a proper look at that in a little bit when we're ready to get going. But you'll see now the dashboard starting to come to life. And I'll just give you a quick scan around here. So deck saloon set up here with the sliding patio door arrangement does bring that cockpit there back into this saloon area, all integrated on one very minor step up there. Boat presents extremely nicely, just been cleaned professionally by local guys that do all the Princess's new boat stock. Uh, we've just had the roof section up the top here wrapped. We'll have a look at that outside, as is quite common on these. Get a little bit of gel coat fade over the years, and that is back to new as such with it freshly wrapped over the top by the guys that do a lot of work for the factory. So let's get ready for departure. Check back in a bit, and we'll just do a quick startup procedure. Okay, so to show you what we will do before we get going, pretty typical on a boat of this sort of size. Quick look in the engine room to make sure we're happy with everything. So down, nice easy ladder access here to the engine space. And we have, I say D6 engines on pods. So it's a D6435 engine. We've got water strainers on the top here. I don't need to check things like oils as the odors just recently run the boat out and they have so many modern warning systems on say so that will tell us if it's not happy at all but I'm main, mainly worried down here just that the weed filters this time of year do sometimes get clogged up. We'll have a proper look in there when we get back later. Just drop that down. Grab the fob here. So as is quite common with the later Volvo engines here we just scan that across there. You can see the little green lights come on. Ignition's on there. And that will bring the boat into life. So we're reading, here we go, 439 hours, 431 hours. So pretty evenly matched there from new. I'm just scanning around. We'll have a proper look at this as we get going. Can open up, as you can see here. The advantage of something like a hard top cruiser here is we have the ability to transform the boat touch of a button we're now in an open top sports cruiser very handy indeed so once that's all the way back I'll show you also here at the helm we do have a side window quite nice as we'll be coming alongside obviously the starboard pontoon here easy to get on and off the boat just checking, we've got 46% fuel on board, so plenty for the sea trial today. Uh, we've got obviously a throttle and steering control, and over here, the bow thruster. Just a quick touch on that to make sure it works. Obviously today, we won't be using these for docking. We should be using the joystick system. So we just push the button on there and activate that. 
and that is immediately, as you can see, live and ready to go. So we'll be able to take the boat off the mooring, obviously IPS controlled, very, very easy to manoeuvre. Got a little bit of space in the fairway here in front of us, and then we'll be off, out and away. So just the two of us, so Kim will be doing the lines and what have you, she's got her life jacket on already, just taking off the secondary lines that were on for storage. So we had a line running across the platform here, which she's just taken off. And then the shore power lead here was plugged in. That's like your extension lead in the garage at home. And that just allows us to connect up the main cooking facilities, the air conditioning and what have you. So in terms of departure here, so we've got obviously a couple of stern lines here, a little spring to stop the boat coming backwards. And then on the front end here, the same idea with the bow line coming down to the pontoon. Now you'll see modern pontoons in Swanwick, they're all geared around different sizes of boat and therefore different height above the water. But these here, I'm just under six foot myself, I can reach the cleat. So my crew and my sort of coming along side planning will be done off the dock here. So what I will get him to do is we're gonna take the bow line off first, we'll throw that up onto the deck. I can use the bow thruster to hold the boat in situ. And then she'll come back, take this line off on the stern and we will be away. Lots of fenders down the side here. Always important to have more of those than you really need because it's better to be safe than sorry when you're doing your manoeuvres. Just for a little bit of peace of mind, this owner does in fact have fenders both sides just in case anything's going wrong and we could lean against the other boat next door if we had to. Obviously a very pretty boat here, hard to really get a, a feel for the side profile but the nice graphite engine intakes here, we've got that graphite colour up on the roof structure there. It'll be easier to see with the drone. Our boat is scheduled to come out of the water in September for all her polishing, anti-foul and service works and what have you. So that can very much be negotiated into the deal depending on when and how quickly you want to get on to the water. So Kim and I have just had a chat about how we're going to do this. She's quite happy down there and just come back up. She'll get to the helm and we'll get ready to go. I have been around earlier and just checked all the doors and what have you are shut. And always just before the dock departure, I do like to just double check everything's working, check nothing's coming and I can give Kim the go ahead now to take the lines off. So Kim, if you want to take the bow line off for us, please. Nice, obviously with the side window here, we can have a open communication. Imagine the weather not quite so good. We could have the roof shut and yet we can still crack the window open enough just to have a conversation here as we come off the dock. So the steering now is effectively locked as we are on the joystick. If we wanted to switch back onto throttles at any time, literally just by engaging the levers, it will automatically disengage the joystick system and then we're back on to conventional steering, although facing forward with our propellers, everything does work slightly differently. So she's just taking the bow line off entirely there, throwing it up onto the deck, coming back down here, Obviously looking at the flotsam in the water here, we don't really have any significant tidal movement here. And I do often like to look up the top here on the yacht mast, just to get a feel what the wind's doing. It's pinning us onto the dock at the moment, so we don't have any concern with being blown away. So she's just taking the line off the back there. And when she's happy, she'll step on with all of the lines and we'll take everything away with us. So the fairways here at Swanwick are always about one and a half times wider, the longest length of boats. So we've got space here to come off. Kim's just called us clear. So we're just gonna do a little movement here sideways on the joystick and then nudge her forward and off we go. You see just a small input as we tease the boat out off the berth. bit of sideways there just to take us off the dock which you can see down there. It's proportional this joystick system so the more you push it the more power it has. You can now come across starting to clear at the back here and if I now want to rotate the boat we'll clear of the mooring literally just twist the top and the boat will start to spin round on its axis. Really good visibility these, even with the patio door arrangement there with them 
fully open, you can see we've got a great panoramic vista. And we just check we are now totally clear of that pontoon. A little bit more rotation here on the joystick. Bring around and we're away. So we could engage on here. We could also stay on the joystick control initially. So if we push it straight on there, it's now engaging both engines together and we can twist the top and you can see that is now steering the boat. Very, very intuitive. It can obviously spoil when I get to play around with boats all day, every day. Sometimes I'm sure on the videos it made to look very simple and it isn't. I'm now just going to switch onto my throttle controls and I've got steerage. Now we do need to be careful as we now get out into the main channel. There is more tidal flow here. You can see the water on the way out. Just going to keep a little bit of RPM on as we steer up into the tide. Obviously keep an eye out for smaller boats and paddle boards and all the other users enjoying the water as we are effectively coming out on a blind turn. For those of you ever interested, that's our family broom there that we go away on adventures on. So very easy on the steering there. I've just put it into a hard left-hand turn and you can see the boat is around. Straighten it back up. And we're in the main channel. So as always, we have about 25 minutes now open water down the bottom of the handle. We have a six knot speed limit here on the river. So Kim's now gonna do what is quite common, I think in couple setup, where I actually get her to come and drive the boat and I will go and do the ropes and fenders. So all the fenders will fit into the bow locker in the front there. The lines themselves, we've got lockers in the aft seating here and it takes just a few minutes for us to get the boat stowed ready for the sea. Okay, so I've left Kim driving the boat there. So obviously nice, easy access up on the side decks here. We've got handrails on the roof as well. So if you just spin the camera around, you can see kind of where the rails and everything are in relation to my height. So first thing I do, I come up here, and we'll open up our anchor locker on the foredeck. And you can see we've got some nice baskets in there for stowing fenders away. So you have to excuse me and do this obviously single handed, but we use a round turn two half hitches on the fenders themselves. I won't bore you with this entire process, but you can see how they fit into the baskets here in the front. So we would stow all our fenders away into the locker here. And then whatever's left, we'll put in the lockers at the back. So I'm just gonna put the camera on the deck. You'll see me doing this fast forward all of this. Hopefully, it won't take too long. And we'll get set up there before we get to the bottom of the river. Okay, so that's all our lines and fenders are stowed. So we just come back in the cockpit. We do things like shut the transom gate here. So you stop people going out on the back deck there. We've got the ensign out. We might move some scatter cushions in a minute before we get out to open sea as they do have a habit of blowing away. And let's have a better look around. So as we mentioned earlier, we've got a full camper canvas that goes in this area. You can, of course, take the whole bimini off the top there. So if you want to be in this nice outdoor seating area here on the aft end and it sits down here just to give you a feel loads of very social seating area all around here on the port side with this nice big u-shape table is on two pedestal legs up and down here there's a fill-in cushion section to go on here as well so that make a big sunbed which is a nice little touch again as we saw earlier outside we've got some painted graphite finish here on the wet bar setup and this boat, having been down in the med originally, does have all the attributes you'd expect out here. So we've got the obligatory griddle and a sink with hot and cold water, the bin and the cupboard underneath. There is room to put further refrigeration in if you need to. Uh, we've got controls for the platform and the passerelle here. So that's a letterbox style passerelle, comes out there. Low level cleats as well, handy for the med. We've got low level LED lighting here around various parts of the cockpit, storage underneath the seating and this nice two-tone upholstery. You can see all pretty good condition there. 
handy storage lockers. We've got fuel taps, emergency bilge pump in there. Doors obviously stack back here to the port side and they are three sections. So if we wanted to, we could bring them across and close the boat off like so. Obviously nice floor to ceiling glass there does mean the visibility is maintained always. And they stack back there and lock as required. We've got the curtain over there on the door as well for some privacy in the evenings. Blinds around the side windows here and then we go onto a mesh black windscreen panel there that we took off earlier. Keeps the heat out, protects the boat and also some privacy in the evenings. So coming inside now, have a look at the deck saloon seating itself. We've got a nice cream leather. Spin the camera around here. So you can see that we've got a little bit of wear on the edge of the bolsters here. I'm sure somebody like Leather Medic would do something with that if it bothered you, but not unsightly at all. Two little buffet stools that drop down here to give you dining all around the table. And then of course, nice checkerboard effect. You can see the fixed stainless steel leg there in extremely good condition on the top itself. We just spin round so you can see the general condition of the linings in here. Everything's nice and tidy. You see a very bright day. We haven't got all the lights on today, but these are a soft sort of Alcantara-esque fabric and then LED lighting in the roof itself. There's a 50 inch high-low TV in the box there and then an additional refrigerator and as is quite normal on these the AV set up there with the fusion unit and then all the glassware in that one. An owner's handbook down there we've got all the title paperwork in the office three owners from new this one uh, tax paid originally in the med as she was supplied to Spain when new and then she has been in the UK with her last couple of owners so we have the correct documentation post Brexit to deem her UK tax paid. So with Kim driving, I'll just point you out a few things here at the helm. So we've got a 15.6 inch. This is an E165 Romarine MFD. So we've got hybrid touch here with the buttons on the side, as well as all the touch data here on the screens itself. And that will do things like your radar. Spin around, you can see up the top there, 24 nautical mile four kilowatt radome, seven inch Volvo color display for the engines, the tacos up top there, and then we've got P70 autopilot control there, multifunction display, this will do speed and depth, whatever you wish. Fire extinguisher system, remote control spotlight, your bow thruster we saw earlier, nice bank of switches here for bilge pumps, wiper controls, lighting, etc. And then down just next to Kim there, you have, of course, the VHF handset just behind the throttles. So it's all nice to hand, you've obviously got two seats here so nice for somebody to sit and do your navigation whilst the other one is driving and still very much part of the action here seating is obviously raised so you can see out of the side windows it's a very social boat when you're out on the water all right so i'm just going to put kim on the spot here obviously she gets to drive a few little boats when we're out doing these sorts of videos what do you think kim I'm really impressed with her. Just saying to James off camera how responsive she is. I feel very relaxed, comfortable. If, if James pans around, you know, we're busy afternoon, the sun's out, the wind's down. Been quite busy here, a couple of sailboats passed, but I feel very comfortable and in control of the boat movements. So it's electric hydraulic steering system with the pod, so it's very much one finger lock to lock. Digital fly by wire throttle, so it's very easy for all the close quarter stuff because everything is very, very light to touch. So I'm gonna leave her here at the helm. Let's go down and check out the cabins. So we've got this lovely big atrium effect here, glass windscreen right up above us, and that takes us down into the galley below. The standard layout of the boat is with two cabins. As you can see with this one, we have elected to take the third cabin bunk beds in there, and then it gives you much, much more onboard living space. There is an argument with the dinette set up that with those lovely big saloon windows upstairs, you're very, very unlikely to spend much time down here. So really it's a functional galley where you are still part of the action with that nice bright airy look above you, but you've got the benefit of the third cabin. So I'm just scanning round for you. We've got a microwave oven, three burner electric top there, lots of different 
storage cupboards. You could retrofit a Fisher Paykel drawer dishwasher in here if you wished. And these are all as you would expect. Lots of storage for provisions and what have you. Decent sized single Frankie stainless stink there, satin finish. Upgrade is quartz worktop here in the galley from build. And then the wood finish here, just scan around so you can see the condition. Very clean, tidy, nice uniform color. Is a satin finish black American walnut. Still the most popular wood in modern boats today. And this one has worn extremely well. Works nicely with the light carpets. We maintain a wood floor in the galley area for practicality. And just to show you, obviously boat has been fully strapped by the owners. Nice, perfect way to present for sale really with everything removed. So as you see the boat in the video is how she will come. So we'll come back to the master. I just want to show you how this works going forward. Over here on the starboard side, we have the two single bed bunks. We've still got a decent sized wardrobe down here. In the end, briefcase full of all the manuals down there. And then of course, reverse cycle aircon throughout. So we've got panels in all the cabins. Sharing the bathroom, these forward and the midships cabin, as well as a day head. So this is Jack and Jill arrangement with a decent sized shower stall over there. Hand basin, electric vacuum flush toilet system there and it is a decent size in here forward cabin is a multi converting so these are two single beds currently slid together to give you that island center line double storage drawers in the end but they do split through the middle and then the beds will slide outboard like so and that gives you the ability to use her with twin beds. So if you've got young kids or adults that perhaps aren't quite so friendly, there is the option to give you the best of both worlds. We've got storage up either side of the bed, opening centre hatch up top there, some nice big opening port lights and an AV system in here as well. And as we mentioned, the Jack and Jill arrangement there behind the door for direct access if you've got a couple of friends on board for the weekend, they can use that bathroom as their own. Right, so let's head down to the master cabin. So really the big push on a 50-ish foot sports boat is to get a full beam midships like we see here. Centerline bed is key to have somewhere nice to chill out down here and of course plenty of practical storage. We harp on about it in all the videos, but as boat owners ourselves, this sort of thing is really important. We like to spend extended time away on the water and things like drawers and cupboards and long-term storage for everything from clothes and provisions is fundamental to the practical usage of a boat. You can see up above us here, we've got obviously some intrusions into the ceiling, different levels from the deck head up above us. And we've got a couple of little steps down here, but on the whole, it's pretty good here. So just give you a quick look. I'm not gonna go through all the drawers and cupboards and what have you, but it's nice and bright and airy, big windows and blinds either side and a couple of port lights as well. There's some ventilation behind the door here. Good size wardrobe, illumination inside there. And over on this side, we have a private ensuite with a really good size shower there. And tastefully done here with the same sort of fabrics and finishes that we've seen elsewhere in the boat. So we're getting towards the bottom of the river. Got another few minutes just till we get out to the open waters. And I will take back over from Kim just so we get up and going. Just want to show you up here on the foredeck itself. We've got a recess in here, if you so wish, to put in some bow cushions. Decent size, the galvanized delta anchor up there with electric foot switches. And then we've of course got nice big stainless steel cleats all the way down here for doing our spring lines and what have you. To finish off up top there, we've got a twin trumpet stainless steel horn remote control spotlight up in the middle, TV aerial over on this side and a couple of VHF aerials. There is an AIS transceiver, so that's a send and receive locator beacon system for the boat, becoming much more commonplace on private yachts like this. So she is very much fully equipped and ready to go. So we've got about another five minutes down the river here to open water, can take over from Kim, we'll get up and going, we'll do a little bit of sea trialing and then we'll get the drone out. So join us back in a bit. Okay, so we're bottom of the river. 
And as always, let's get up and going. We've got the ferry off just to our port side. Should just be able to squeeze through this gap here between the yacht off on the right hand side and the ferry itself. Good visibility out the back there. See through the glass windows. Just easing the throttles forward to get the boat up and going. You can see the speed starting to climb as your nose is coming up. Boats now going to come up onto the plane. I say it has been a while since she's been out of the water, but we should still be able to get a decent spurn of speed out of her today. So down here we've got our trim tabs, we've got little LED indicators. We'll just give that a couple of clicks. See the red light starting to come down and that just brings our nose down. And we've got a nice now visibility there out of the windscreen. Quite normal boat just going up on the plane there. That's a momentary alarm of the float switches on the bilge pumps. Often if a boat's been washed, a little bit of water runs backwards through the bilges in the middle and you will get the alarm just coming on to let you know. It disappears instantly as there's no water in there to worry about. We will today just run outside the channel, just giving some space to the jet skis off to our starboard side. We're cruising along here at 22 knots. Just flick through the gauges here. I can show you now consumption. So we're doing 150 liters an hour there. And I would expect with a clean bottom that will drop to around 130 liters an hour at this speed. There is still some more in the tank. So if we want to open her up a little bit more, it will take a bit of time. So she's quite weedy underneath at the moment. That service work booked in September. I'm not gonna expect this to get up nearer the 30 knots, which is what she do with a fresh clean bottom. They are very responsive. We'll just check behind us that we've got nobody coming. Just show you, put the boat into a turn here and they do bank over very gracefully. Don't want to confuse the ferry behind, but you can see very responsive. Doesn't really do much to the speed here, staying up there 20 plus knots very graceful in the water and at this sort of speed you'd be across the channel in four hours down to Dartmouth in around the same or anywhere in the local Solent area is generally less than an hour away. So now that we're out into some safer water we're just going to come back to a tick over we'll get the drone out and we'll do a quick run up and down here Netley Abbey in the background and we'll get some running shots of what she's like from the outside. Okay, so a chance now to see the boat up and running. So we're starting off here, starboard side, boat's up on the plane. As you saw earlier, a little bit of trim tab still on and we're running around 18 knots here. Natural buoyancy with an IPS boat, they do run quite bow up. So often we'll have a little bit of tab on, but you can see that nice clean wake shot behind. So the boat will run a fair bit quicker with a clean bottom once the maintenance works end of season are complete. So just had a good scan round, just seeing the boat from all different angles there. Very graceful through the water. Quick top down shot here. Always love that view of a boat. And then to finish off, just powering into a turn. You can see that boat really maintaining this speed very nicely. Okay, so we're just arriving back into Swanwick. Hope you enjoyed having a look around with the drone with us there. Just arriving back into our fairway here. Quite busy on the river this evening. You just see behind we've got the jet ski and the Squadron coming back in from a busy day on the water there. And you can see we're still on the throttle and gear controls at the moment. Haven't switched the joystick. Take everything nice and easy. Just going to power up my bow thruster. Just check that works. Quick look up on the mast there just to check the wind is still over here from this side. And we'll work our way down the fairway here before we turn switch onto the joystick and then into the mooring. So Kim is all set up. You can see the bow line is over there, looped down the side deck here with a loop hanging over the side. And then the stern line is back there on the aft end, ready for her to step off. So she's gonna step off first, take the stern line onto the pontoon and tie that off on the dock. And then she'll walk down the pontoon, taking the loop here and attach that onto the forward cleat on the end of the dock and then a spring line just to finish off so that we don't move 
before and after. So you can see I'm still doing everything nice and easy, single click in and out of gear here. Can set this up to have a, a beep noise as it comes in and out of gear. I like that as it is just a positive reminder that you have knocked it into gear or not. So we're just coming up here back to our open gnawing here. Obviously sit about halfway down the boat in one of these, so just spin the camera around. There's obviously quite a bit of boat behind us there. Need to be careful as we rotate not to hear the back end on these pontoons here. But we are now pretty much in and we can switch if we want to now onto the joystick. So first thing we're going to do is just knock that into reverse just to slow down the boat. And we'll start to do a bit of rotating now. Just going to come over slightly starboard. The wind's pushing us pretty much on the back corner now. Quite a good reference of the flag up there. And just little movements on the joystick. Obviously, with the bow thruster there, we've got that secondary control if we need it. But to be honest, the joystick does everything we could possibly need in this maneuver. Not the biggest fairway in here, it is a big boat for this particular mooring, but the mooring is available if you wish. Marina are quite happy for her to stay here and we can obviously teach you how to drive the boat, give you complete confidence in this sort of thing. Whether you're new to it or coming up from a bigger boat, it doesn't take long to get to grips with how this system works. There's obviously a reason to be still evening this evening here, so it does make life look a little bit easier we are pretty much now into the berth and we can start to make our approach. Side window very handy here because we can obviously see exactly where the pontoon is in relation to the boat itself. Hopefully on the other camera just up above us there, you can see my little inputs here on the joystick. We know we've obviously got plenty of room on the Targa 37 alongside us. So as we get back into the berth here, I don't really need to look over to the left-hand side anymore. Just stick with what's going on here. You'll see some owners on boats like this might have a center headset system, which is a nice, easy way to communicate with the crew, perhaps if you haven't got the side window or the roof open if the weather doesn't allow. I'm just bringing it over now for Kim to step off on the back there. I can if I want. I'll just show you on the camera behind us there. We can just see how much room we got behind. So the stern's secure. Obviously come up here now onto the bow line. Preparation's everything with these so we get everything nicely set up. Talk through what we're going to do before we arrive back and it does make life that much more easier. A lot less shouting what have you, and that's us safely docked. She's just going to put that spring line on before I leave the dock here, just a little nudge there forward, momentary in and out of gear, and that just allows her to tighten that up and it'll stop the boat from going backwards. You can obviously see she can reach that cleat off the pontoon there, fairly straightforward. Right, so we can power down, nice, easy shutdown process there, engines are off and let's finish off in the engine room. So we obviously had a very quick look in here earlier. It will be quite warm. But luckily you guys don't need to suffer that. So we'll just pop the hatch up, back down the ladder. Let's just finish off with a quick look at what's here. So we have a light switch there. Obviously generator over there on the outboard side. Upgrade on that's 13 and a half kilowatt. 
for outboard fuel tanks either side. Nice easy filters there for the engine on this port side and the generated pre-filter. Batteries over there on the port side. Storage locker up above here above the engines. Obviously these are available as an open cockpit boat as well where you would do away with the doors and then you have the option for a garage in here but on the patio door version you just have the aft storage locker on the back end. It will take a little air deck style inflatable dinghy if you wish. Um, over this side these are the aircon chiller packs so we've got a full reverse cycle hot and cold system there and you pass around we obviously mentioned earlier. Everything nicely to hand, well laid out, easy access. And around on the forward bulkhead we've got the main electrical boxes and breakers, battery charger here and of course the fire suppression system. So all in all that's a good look round for us today, obviously chance to see what she's like out on the open water and just to top all that off explaining to you how it works so well about this sort of size with two people. Obviously with all the cabins very much bring your guests, bring your family but a lot of the time for us when we're talking about selling boats like this it's reassuring people that it's not nearly as complicated to learn how to drive it, operate it and ultimately the more simple it is on the water the more fun you're going to have. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as always, if you'd like to know more, it's james at sunseekersouthampton.com or the mobile is plus 447747 Check back soon and we look forward to hearing from you.